Have you ever wondered before what is so good about Good Friday? It was just after they celebrated the Passover meal that Jesus and the disciples head out to the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus asked the disciples to watch and pray. Jesus knew that one of the disciples was going to betray him. He knew that another disciple was going to deny him. He knew that soldiers would soon come and arrest him. He knew that he was about to go through intense physical pain. No wonder he prayed, take this cup of suffering from me. No wonder he sweat drops of blood. So what's so good about all that? And sure enough, just as he expected, things began to unravel. Judas greets Jesus with a kiss and hands him over to those who came to arrest him. As Jesus was being interrogated, somebody asked Peter if he knew Jesus. Twice, Peter flatly denied having any association with Jesus whatsoever. As Jesus goes through several interrogations, both civil and religious, it is determined that he isn't really guilty of any of the charges that have been brought against him. But that doesn't satisfy the crowd. Apparently, there was this odd custom in those days that during the Passover festival, they could release a prisoner of the crowd's choosing. And so who knows why, but they selected a man by the name of Barabbas and, and ordered for Jesus to be sentenced to death. There was no way this crowd was going to take no for an answer. So here, a condemned criminal is set free, and an innocent man is sentenced to die. What in the world is so good about that? Now the Roman soldiers come and mock him and make fun of him. They strip his clothes off of him. They spit on him. They hit his head several different times. They put a royal robe on him. They take some thorns and they twist it together in the form of a crown and, and push it down on his head. As an act of mockery, they, they kind of bow before him as if he was a king. Considering the physical pain that Jesus is going through and will go through more, and consider the, considering the public humiliation he's facing, what's so good about all that? Then they lead him off to be crucified. With three spikes and a hammer in his hand, one of the soldiers walks over to a cross that's laying on the ground. The soldiers ordered Jesus to lay his bare, bleeding back against the splintered wood of that cross. They stretch his arms out on the cross beams. One nail goes through one wrist. A second nail goes through the other wrist. One of the soldiers positions Jesus' foot against, flat against the wood and the other foot on top of that in a rather awkward, uncomfortable position. Then the soldier hammers the third nail in the middle of the top foot, going through the bottom foot and then into the wood. With the cross lying flat on the ground, they use some ropes to lift it up and to drop it in the hole that has been dug for it. As the cross slides into that hole, it happens with such force that it kind of jars Jesus' body, which rips the flesh where the nails were holding him to the cross beam. Hanging there, writhing in pain, literally half dead, he calls out to the only one who could possibly spare him any further torment. My God, my God, he cries, why have you forsaken me? But there's no reply. There's no offer to spare him any further pain. 
So what in God's name is so good about all that? Jesus breathes his last breath. Even though it's noon, darkness fills the whole sky. The ground they're standing on shakes with such violence that rocks literally split open. A soldier walks over to where Jesus is hanging on that cross, and with a spear in his hand, he pierces his side and outflows blood and water, confirming the fact that his body was indeed dead. Before the Sabbath could begin, they take his body off the cross, wrap it in linen cloths, and place it in a tomb sealed by a large rock. You know, certainly one of the reasons that we gather together tonight on this Friday we call good is simply to contemplate the horror of it all. And as we do, we can't help but ask ourselves the question, what in God's name is so good about all that? Especially when we realize the reason that it actually happened. And the reason? It was actually for every one of us. An innocent man is punished for our guilt, for our sin, for our wrongs, for our offenses. An innocent man takes our place, and in exchange we go free. And this isn't just any person. This is actually the very Son of God himself. God took up our pain and bore our suffering as the prophet Isaiah wrote a thousand years before this. God was pierced for our transgressions. God was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brings us peace was on him and by his wounds, by the wounds that the Son of God endured, we are healed. You see, all of this really wasn't Pontius Pilate's fault. We really can't pin it on Judas or, or Peter. We can't just say it was the fault of the crowd who, who continued to cry for him to be crucified. We all did this. Or maybe better said, God did this for us all. In one of my former congregations, we had this tradition on Good Friday that we would take a large wooden cross and place it front and center in the church. Now, there were probably hundreds and hundreds of holes that had been drilled into that cross. And in front of the cross was a table, and there was a basket, and in the basket were hundreds and hundreds of nails larger than the one I'm holding in my hand. And the point of all of that is for each one of us, it was early in the service while we were singing a song, and each person got up and, and walked over to that cross and took a nail and placed it in that cross as an indication that it, it, it's my sin, it's our sin, that, that literally nailed Jesus to that cross. I can tell you that after years of watching that, I have vivid memories of people who walked forward to do that action. An elderly gentleman who had mobility challenges, and he shuffled along with his walker. And every time he tried to do something, his, his hand would shake, and, and, the, and the congregation, the, the church floor was ceramic tile, and, and I can remember hearing the sound of that, of that nail hitting the tile floor again and again until he finally got it in there. Dads would pick up their kids who had a nail in their hand, and, and dads would lift up their kid to put it in the top of the cross. Person after person came forward. Many people who I had sat with over the years, and, and I knew their stories. I had heard their confessions. I, 
I had heard their, their pain and the brokenness that they had experienced in life. And, and they were willing to say, it's my sin that did this. One holy week co corresponded with, uh, coincided rather, with spring break like it does this week for our schools here. That Friday morning, my son announced that he was going to the beach with some friends. And as he headed out the door, I said, don't forget, it's Good Friday and church is at 7. He walked out kind of with that attitude that like a teenager would that I thought, well, I probably won't see him. But as a group of people came up, there he was with his friends in their swimming trunks and sandals as if they had just walked off the beach to take their teenage nails and put their own imperfections in that cross. Person after person, struggle after struggle, regret after regret, sin after sin, pain and brokenness in all of us. It was our nails that held Jesus to the cross. What's so good about Good Friday? Jesus did what he did. For every one of us. Why? Out of love. Love for the chief priests and the soldiers. Love for the disciple who betrayed him and the one that denied him and all the other disciples. Love for the criminal who was crucified next to him, the thief on the cross. Love for every generation that came before Jesus and for every generation that will come after him. God's love for you and me. Jesus received the punishment for our sins so that we would never have to experience that in life. And in return, we receive forgiveness every single day of our life. We're given a new beginning every single day. We live at peace with God every single moment of life. We are given the promise of eternal life. All of that, all of that, because of Jesus. All of that for you and me. That's what's so good about Good Friday. In Jesus' name, amen.